Hello and welcome to the Mid Ohio Valley Public Forum video podcast. I'm Jennifer Bryant. And I'm Kim Van Ryan. And we're your co-hosts. The current pandemic has changed life greatly throughout our country. And this is an election year. So one of the things that has changed is that candidates can't campaign the way they normally would. So we hope this video podcast will enable you to get to know the candidates better. If you're a candidate and you're interested in being interviewed, you can reach out to us through our Facebook page, that's the MOV Public Forum, or via email, that's movpublicforum at gmail.com. But you should do it soon because election day is less than 30 days away and people are already beginning to vote. Today we'll be interviewing Kathy Kunkel. Kathy is running for the U.S. House of Representatives for District 2. Welcome, Kathy. We're so glad you could join us this morning. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Well, with that, let's start. Uh, take just a minute and uh, give us a very short introduction on who Kathy Kunkel is and why you decided to run for office. Absolutely. I mean, well, the very short answer is that I decided to run because I've been frustrated by the lack of progress on issues I've been working on for a long time. Um, I've been deeply involved in my community here in Charleston. Uh, we had the Freedom Industries chemical spill in 2014 that contaminated the drinking water. Uh, and I got very involved in organizing a community group that fought for three years to win some improvements to the safety of our drinking water. Um, I also co-founded Rise Up West Virginia in Kanawha County, a group that advocates and has helped to um, push some legislative victories on expanding access to health care and capping insulin prices and advocates for better services for folks struggling with addiction too. Um, and in my professional work as a consumer advocate, um, I've testified many times before our Public Service Commission and fought with our state's utility monopolies as they've, as they've demanded hundreds of millions of dollars of our money in corporate bailouts. I've fought for stronger energy efficiency and rooftop solar programs as well. Um, and, you know, particularly having worked in energy in the state for the last decade, I've just been frustrated more and more by the lack of political leadership on energy and the economic transition that our state is undergoing. And that's why I you know, hope to go to D.C. and really be a voice for, for ordinary West Virginians and not just, you know, the corporate interests that have dominated the state for such a long time. So, Kathy, we take for granted that you're running for office to... Um, uh, help the people of District 2. Uh, what do you see as the three main issues that impact the people of District 2 and what do you hope to uh, do about it? Absolutely. Well, in a very big picture way, um, you know, I think we, we need to have a very serious conversation about revitalizing our economy here in West Virginia. You know, for the last 150 years, we've had this extractive economy where billions of dollars of wealth has been extracted from our state by out-of-state corporations, and we've perpetually been one of the poorest states in the country. Um, and quite frankly, the rest of the country owes us a debt here in West Virginia for the coal and the gas and all the sacrifices that we've made to power this country for such a long time. Um, and you know, I wanna go to DC and advocate for the, the federal investment that we need here in West Virginia in basic infrastructure needs, including broadband internet, uh, safe drinking water, environmental reclamation. Um, and part of building a, revitalizing our economy here in West Virginia also means tackling uh, major crises in our healthcare system and the addiction crisis. So those are two other major issues I hope to work on too. Well, I think you've um, you hit really the, the highlights of what we hear a lot of people um, being concerned about. Um, what do you feel like you want to do about those issues uh, with addiction, um, the opioid crisis? Um, do you have any specific plans, um, you know, if you get to D.C., uh, how to deal yeah, with Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, the addiction crisis uh, needs a sustained federal investment, not just in treatment, but also in prevention and long term mm -hmm. recovery. You know, we need to make sure that people who are uh, getting out of treatment um, have you know, stable places to live, uh, you know, long-term recovery housing so that they're not just going back into the same environment uh, where they, you know, uh, got into addiction in the first place. Um, and we need to focus on prevention, um, looking at 
models of what other countries have done in terms of investments in after-school programs and extracurricular programs for youth that have not only brought down addiction rates, but also obviously paid big dividends in terms of just supporting young people. Um, and in terms of healthcare more broadly, um, I'm an advocate of Medicare for all. I think in the richest country in the world, there's no reason that we can't guarantee healthcare to every citizen. You know, I shouldn't be hearing stories of a mother whose child has cancer and who's fighting every week for hours with private insurance companies and is forgoing her own healthcare needs to try to afford the medicine that her child with cancer needs. You know, it's just unacceptable. Well, Kathy, voters don't often have the opportunity to get to know candidates on a personal level. And so we think it can be helpful when people are running for office, helpful to the voters to get to know them a little bit on a more personal level. And with that in mind, we'd like to ask you a few questions about yourself as a person, not as a candidate. What would you say you were most passionate about? Well, uh, you know, maybe this isn't surprising since I got into running for politics, but I am in fact very passionate about politics, but specifically getting more people involved in politics. Um, and that's why I started Rise Up West Virginia back in 2017. You know, I strongly believe that real social change in this country doesn't come about from electing one or two good people to office. It comes through social movements and through people organizing. And we've seen that so many times in our own state's history from the mine wars up into the teacher strikes of a couple years ago. Um, and, you know, I really feel like, uh, you know, if we're not uh, all getting involved in politics and, and taking responsibility for our roles, we're leaving it up to other people and often to out of state corporations to be making decisions that truly directly affect us and our families. What qualities do you most value in the people around you? That's a great question. Um, honesty is a huge one for me and, and just, you know, reliability. You know, I, I really value people who follow through on their commitments on what they say they're going to do. Um, and, you know, I think some of my, my closest relationships with people, I, you know, everyone has those two traits. <laughs> so. Well, what would you say you enjoy doing in what little off time I'm sure you have? <laughs> Yes, uh, there hasn't been too much off time uh, in recent months, um, but I do enjoy, enjoy jogging. I enjoy hiking, just getting out and exploring the beautiful parts of our state. I'm looking forward to getting back to Otter Creek Wilderness sometime uh, next month after this campaign is finished. So, Well, with that, we've come to the end. Um, we'd like to give you a few minutes uh, to give us and the voters any more information you think we need, including how to get more information on your campaign, uh, how to get involved, donate, et cetera. Absolutely. So, you know, like, like I just said, you know, I, I really strongly believe in uh, empowering more people to get involved in politics. And one of the reasons that I ran this year um, was because of the West Virginia Can't Wait movement, um, which is a group that uh, includes dozens of candidates running for offices up and down the ballot. Um, all of us have pledged not to take corporate money in our campaigns, which I think is, is critical. Um, and, you know, when we look at our state government and how so many decisions seem to be made by lobbyists who are often able to, to literally write the laws. So, so not taking corporate money is critical to me and being part of West Virginia Can't Wait, which is going to continue organizing past this election, um, bringing more people into politics. So I encourage folks to check out West Virginia Can't Wait, as well as our own campaign, uh, which you can find at KunkelforCongress.com uh, or on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Kunkel for Congress. Um, our volunteers have written and sent close to 80,000 postcards to voters across the district this fall. Um, and we've made 25,000 phone calls and texts with the goal of reaching 100,000 by election day. Um, so if you'd like to get involved in that, it's obviously been a massive effort. So um, you can find out more at our, our website, conkleforcongress.com. And feel free to get in touch directly too. My phone number is 304-928-3902. And I look forward to hearing from folks. Thank you, Kathy. We appreciate your interest in serving the people of West Virginia, and we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us this morning. Everyone, stay safe. Wash your hands. <laughs>